Okay, now we're going to dial indicate this wheel end to see what your end play is. There's a lot of mechanics out there that'll stick a tar bar underneath the steer and they're going like this. That's not measuring end play, that's worn kingpins. End play is this. And one to five thousandths, it's not that much. It's about the thickness of the hair on my head, not a lot. So gentlemen, this is end play. You gotta have a dial indicator to check end play. You gotta have the right dial indicator. You gotta have one that's in thousands, not ten thousands. You're gonna hook it up with a magnetic base on the end of that spindle. You got a tiny little offset gauge there that has to have a slight preload on that plunger. It cannot be at zero. And guys, keep that plunger from going into the holes. If it goes into the holes, you're gonna knock that dial indicator off and you're gonna bend it and you're gonna be buying a new one. Now, five years ago, these are about 250 bucks. Nowadays, they're probably around $30, very inexpensive. So set it to zero and what they want you to do, what they want you to do here, they want you to grab that wheel in at nine o'clock and three o'clock while you're grabbing it, they want you to oscillate it. And while you're oscillating it, you're going to pull towards you and hold it. And that needle's going to go to the right. Each one of these slashes represents a thousand. So if it goes two th slashes, that's two thousands. You're going to do the same thing, except you're going to go the opposite direction, sit it back to zero, oscillate it, push away from you, hold it, and stop. So if it's two thousand here, two thousand here, two and two is what? Four thousand. Would that be an acceptable wheel in? Yes. So this is all they want you to do, guys, is grab it. While you're grabbing it, oscillate it, pull towards you, hold it. Again, push away from you, oscillate it, hold it, stop. And again, read it. Now, is that the final check, the dial indicator? No. The final check is this wheel has to turn smooth, quiet, free without any hesitation. You rotate this wheel and you hear a pop, you got a problem. You rotate this wheel and it stops, you got a problem. Now, you got to fill up that wheel in. You can use the best seal in the world, best bearings in the world, do your bearing adjustment just right. If you don't put the adequate lubrication in there, it's gonna burn up. Now, we talked about visual inspections. You also have a visual inspection of the inboard side of that wheel assembly. The law is, if the brakes are soaked in oil, you're out of service. There's a violation right there. Unfortunately, the DOT doesn't look at it that way. If they see any sort of weepage, seepage, or whatever words you want to use around that wheel end, around that seal, around that brake hardware and hub assembly, they look at it as a leaker that's getting ready to happen. So I get asked all the time, if it's wet back there on that seal, do I replace the seal? Is the DOT going to stop you today? I don't know. I personally would replace the seal. Always scrape off the old gasket and replace it with a new gasket. Stemco's gaskets are cork and rubber. Now, these are 5 16 bolts. If you tighten them down to 50 foot pounds, you'll snap the heads and you'll crack your castings and you will have a leak path. So let me install this hubcap. Again, 12 to 16 foot-pounds. How much is 12 to 16 foot-pounds? This is 12 to 16 foot-pounds, not much. And do a star pattern. Don't go ring around the rosy. You'll pinch that gasket and you'll have a leaker. Now, let's talk about TMC's RP631, which is the proper fill recommendation for non-drive axle and drive axle applications. Non-drive axle applications would be typically would be a steer and a trailer. Remove the filler plug, add oil, fill up the hub cavity until the oil is even with the full line, which is indicated on the hub cap. Waste management's policy is to replace the red plug every time you replace brakes and wheel seals. Now let's talk about the drive axle applications. TMC's RP631 recommends that you 
jack up one end than the opposite end, a minimum of eight inches for approximately one minute to allow the oil to flow to the opposite side. Remove the filler plug in the axle, fill it up if necessary to the manufacturer's recommendation. Now, there's something else on that axle you need to look for, and that is the axle breather plug, which I have in my hand. If this axle breather plug vent, what do you want to call it, is clogged, you are going to do what? Build up pressure in that axle and it's going to blow your drive axle seals. So always make sure this is not clogged. And if this is damaged, if this rain cap's missing, replace it with a new axle breather vent plug. Now, we're going to go through the bearing adjustment using the Pro Torque nut. The Pro Torque nut is a single nut that replaces all your jam nuts. It's the same mass, same thickness. It's been out for approximately 30 some years. It's standard on just about everything being manufactured today from tractors and trailers. Now, again, we're talking about a conventional wheel end here. So let's remove the double nut. Again, do not use impacts. Bendable stars, I've replaced them. Again, if your bearing adjustment's done correctly for a standard bearing adjustment, you should be able to take this inner nut off with your bare hands. Nice thing about the Pro Torque nut, doesn't care if you're working on a steer, doesn't care if you're working on a drive, doesn't care if you're working on a trailer. The bearing adjustment's always the same. The only difference is the back off. Again, hand tighten the Pro Torque nut. Take your breakover bar. Draw it up. Always start in the relaxed state, so back it off. Now, the initial torque on this nut was the same as the inner nut on the double nut. It's 200, we didn't change anything. So it's 200 foot pounds while rotating or spinning the wheel. The difference is we want three rotations and three clicks. Let me set my torque wrench, and by the way, should you get your torque wrenches recalibrated? Yes, a minimum of once a year. Who does it? The tool guys do it. So, draw that nut up before you start rotating. Tighten the Pro Torque nut against the bearings. The initial torque is 200 foot pounds while rotating the wheel one full turn. Retorque the Pro Torque nut to 200 foot pounds while rotating the wheel one full turn. Torque the Pro Torque nut to 200 foot pounds. Now, the directions are going to tell you, back it off till it's loose. What's loose, it could be a quarter, it could be a third, you'll actually feel the bearings relax. That's loose. Now, I said it earlier with the double nut, a lot of mechanics out there will spin this. We know it's loose. You spin it now, you will unseat your bearings, so don't spin. Spin it. Now we're going to retorque it to 100 foot pounds. Okay. 
So again, draw it up before you start rotating. Tighten the pro torque nut against the bearings. The final torque for the pro torque nut is 100 foot pounds while rotating the wheel one full turn. Retort the pro torque nut to 100 foot pounds while rotating the wheel one full turn. Finally, torque the pro torque nut to 100 foot pounds while rotating the wheel one full turn. If you just did one click, you can see that the nut itself tightened up when it came to three rotations. So do three rotations, three clicks. Now, this inner nut, you backed off a quarter. The directions on this pro torque nut is gonna tell you to back the nut off a quarter. And it also tells you one alignment mark. So you have four dimples on here, or four alignment marks, whatever you wanna call it. So you back it off one quarter or one alignment mark. From here to there is alignment mark. From here to there is alignment mark. Now, when I put my socket over the pro torque nut, I cannot see those dimples or alignment marks. Now, how am I gonna get there? The easiest thing to do, gentlemen, is take your hub, this is your hub cap bolt hole, put it opposite one of those dimples. Take your breakover bar and your socket right here. Use your finger right here. There's alignment mark. So if I put my finger there for that alignment mark, I know where the other one is. Okay. Now, this keeper right here, it's painted orange and it says on the front, this side facing out. We made a design change. Again, I said it earlier on the drive axles and also the trailers. We put paddles or teardrops on them to keep anybody from putting these in backwards, okay? We had had some mechanics that tried to put these in backwards. There's a groove, 360 degrees all the way around. That top tab goes in the groove. These points and teeth have to line up. Bottom groove goes into the keyway this keeper should fall in loose. If there's any resistance in the keeper, back it off a hair. Each one of those teeth represents the thousands. Do not force that keeper in there. got to go in loose. Take your breakover bar and your socket. Make sure that that keeper is locked in place, about 10 to 12 foot pounds. That wheel should spin that easy without any hesitation, without any stopping, without any popping. And don't forget to do what? put the lubricant back in the wheel end. We're gonna continue on with the uh, pro torque nut and we're gonna dial indicate the wheel end just like we did with the double nut. Again, you install it the same way, use the magnetic base. Be careful that, that plunger doesn't go in one of those holes, the hubcap bolt holes. Set it to zero. We're gonna grab that wheel end again at nine o'clock, three o'clock position while we're oscillating the wheel and pulling towards you. You have to stop. If you keep oscillating that wheel while you're pulling towards you, that needle keeps moving. You have to stop and hold it. Then we're gonna do the same thing, set it back to zero, oscillate it away from you, stop, and take a reading. So it's gonna to go to the right of the zero and also the left. So we're gonna grab this wheel end assembly right here, three o'clock, uh, nine o'clock, just like, a, like you're driving and you're gonna oscillate it 45 degrees, stop and hold it. Set it back to zero, push away from you while you're oscillating, hold it, okay? One and one is what, two, that's two thousands. Would this be an acceptable wheel in? Yes, you need to get down between one and five thousands. Now, something else I mentioned that your red plug can blow a wheel seal. On the rear axle, you have that vent plug. If that vent plug, that breather is plugged, 
it's going to blow your drive axle seals. That's the biggest problem with the drive axle seals is that vent plug is plugged. Okay. Now something else, that rain cap that they typically have uh, on the breather, if that is missing and it rains, all that water just went into that drive axle. So replace that vent plug if that rain cap is missing. Now, another thing is your speed sensor right here. Uh, you're supposed to take this speed sensor, push it against that tone ring. You rotate the wheel assembly once, it will kick it back a business card. If you have what is known as too much air gap, you're gonna have an ABS light problem, okay? Couple of possibilities, ABS light comes on, your speed sensor, your harness self is frayed, you got too much air gap, or you have excessive lateral movement on that spindle, loose wheel bearings, and there's no fault code for that. Now, we talked about oil, okay? There are wheel ends out there that are not running in oil. They're running in a synthetic grease, okay? What it is, it's an oil that they've added uh, soap to it, thickeners. Uh, this one here is called uh, Mobilith 007, licensed to lubricate. What makes this stuff work is heat and gravity. Where you place this, it stays. Now, you have to fill up the wheel end 50% full. The only way you can do it is you have to have this nut off, have your outer bearing out, have your bearings already packed with a bearing packer. Now, you got your wheel end assembly already stuck in there, you'll have a straight wand, not the hook. The hook is for the oil. Take a straight wand, stick it all the way back in that hub and start pumping it. When you get to that three o'clock, nine o'clock position, that's 50% full stop. Now, when it's 110 degrees out there, this stuff does flow. And what we recommend is you can get one of these templates here. They got different sizes. This happens to be from Castro. And nice thing about this right here is that will keep that semi-grease from flowing out. Start at the 12 o'clock position, let it flow down. When it gets 50%, uh, that's all you need. Have that outer bearing already packed, shove it in there, put it back together. And this will help in the process.